let me just correct the height of this. Oh, I thought I... Okay, um, this looks doable. Trying out this, um, on my phone. Let's see, just a little bit closer. Perfect. Okay, so welcome everyone to the Friday um, Night Live edition. Uh, it's our first Friday Night Live in 2022. And um, so welcome. So I've got a lot of requests. Um, tai Chi seems to be the popular uh, thing. So we'll, we'll do some Tai Chi and then um, we'll end off with uh, some poetry. So without further ado, uh, let me see how I can position. Hmm. I'm gonna I'm have to move this camera. Let's move it over here. So if you're joining me, there we go. This looks somewhat okay. I should have thought I should have thought this out before before <laughs> I mean just okay. I should have thought out how that I'm gonna place these things. I just last minute decided to use my phone to try this new tripod out, but let me see if I Okay, adjust the tripod so that All right, sorry about this. I'm trying to find a way where it, I can have some movement. There we go. I think this is, I think this is good. Okay, so I'll just move it back a bit. All right, so thank you for <laughs> bearing with me as I try to figure out the best camera angle. I think this is good. So for Tai Chi, it's always recommended, um, I, I recommend to do it, not always recommend, but I recommend, I like to do it barefoot. So I'm just gonna remove these wool socks. It just allows me to be a little bit more in contact with the ground. Now you can do this either uh, standing or sitting, depending on what your uh, body is able to do at this time and place. The comments, hi Laura, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, welcome to the new year. So, I'm not sure, okay, this is as visible as my body is gonna get and everyone can hear me okay, I hope. Um, the first thing that we learn in uh, Tai Chi or any form of energetic body uh, work like yoga is how to carry our stance, how to carry our posture. So today, let's just examine how uh, we're standing or we're sitting, wherever you are, and just check in without, um, without even trying to change your position of your body. Just notice um, where there are tension. It helps when you close your eyes a little bit. So for myself, just by closing my eyes, I can already feel some tension on my upper back and uh, behind uh, the neck area here. So that sometimes would cause me to slouch a little bit forward when, when really what we want there is a little bit of openness. So I may send some intention and maybe send my breath there. <sighs> Just so that I can ease in into the posture. Um, Malulu the cat is down there, so hopefully it doesn't knock over the tripod. Hi, Malulu. So we can begin by gently introducing movement into the bodies, maybe some shoulder rotations, backwards and forwards, okay? You can roll the shoulder, one shoulder forward and then the other one backwards and see how that feels and see how it feels if you try to do it together. So one is moving forward, one is moving backwards. I'm just gonna notice how this 
you know, seemingly simple yet difficult task can then bring us to the present moment awareness, which is what we're really trying to access. And all of these uh, form of mindful movements, so forward, backward, it's hard to do when you're teaching and talking at the same time. And we're gonna do that on the other side, on my, um, on your right side now, moving forward, and then the left side backwards. So first doing one side, and then the other side, and then together. Okay. Wow, it's extremely difficult. <laughs> okay, so I noticed the next thing that wants to move is my neck. So I may want to do a, just a circular rotation with my neck. Clockwise, counterclockwise. Ooh, there we go. Rotations of the shoulders again. Maybe just shaking it off a little bit, just shake it off and kind of like stress that has accumulated throughout the day. So just shaking off your arms, body. The other thing that we do in uh, kind of Tai Chi and Qigong is this kind of like twisting. You might have noticed people doing in this in the park, just twisting like this. And uh, what they're doing is they're actually activating their um, energy center, which is located in the kidney. So the kidneys anatomically are located here in the back, the flank. So when you're twisting, you're gently knocking on the kidney. So you're kind of knocking on your energy centers and that begins to um, activate them. It begins to wake it up. So I'm just doing that right now. All right. The other thing is um, we start moving downwards. Okay, so we're twisting and we're becoming really aware of how our pelvis moves. So our pelvis um, right over here contains a lot of, um, it contains a lot of um, energetic uh, and nerve, nerve endings especially, that's where our spine terminates. Um, and it also happens to contain a lot of constriction because of the way we sit um, on chairs. So it's important to be mindful to start the movement from the, from the pelvis and up. So I'm not twisting from my shoulders, I'm twisting from my pelvis. From here, you can put your hands where your hips are and then you can kind of do these rotations, large rotations. So you may wanna have to um, increase the, the distance of your feet, the stance where your feet are to shoulder width distance or even more and start uh, bending one leg, um, bending my uh, your right leg here and then onto the left side doing this kind of really large circular as if you're drawing a huge circle with your hips and this is called dragon drinks from a well because as you can imagine the dragon coming down to drink and then up again dragon dr drinks from a river i think a well or a river, i'm not sure anyway the dragon drinks so i'm moving circular motion dragon drinks from a river all right <clears throat> So you notice we're moving our way downwards here. The next thing we're gonna do is we're going to place our hands where the side of the knees, so not putting any pressure onto the knees uh, whatsoever. And then we're going to be rotating the knees clockwise. So by rotating the knees, it's like, yeah, like going in circular motion. I'm not sure if you can see that well, but counterclockwise. Right, and then we're gonna do that with our feet. So like rotating, you don't have to lift it this time, I'm showing it to you, clockwise, counterclockwise, and then the other way. Okay, this is good. So earlier on, I said that we're going, the first thing we're gonna learn is how to stand or sit in a dignified position. So you want our feet uh, into what is called a horse stance because it's kind of like you are seated on a, on a horse. Um, you want your feet to be a little bit um, on a 40, almost a 45 degrees pointing outwards, and you want them to be uh, shoulder 
width apart, or yeah, shoulder width apart. This is shoulder width apart. So your feet should align to where your shoulder is. It's hard to see here. But my feet are kind of facing outwards like that, not straight ahead, but outwards. This gives a lot more balance. And then um, they're aligned. Uh, so if you draw were to draw a line up from where my base of my feet is, it would align to where my shoulders is. And this makes it easier for us to bend our knees slightly, micro bend, and that gives us a little bit more balance, kind of like, you know, when you're riding a horse, if you've ever ridden a horse. From here, I invite you to take a slow, easy, deep, deep breath in, and just notice how your belly kind of responds to that and accepts that breath in, and exhale. And on your next breath, see if you could send that breath all the way to the base of your feet. So breathing in to the base of the feet. And then exhaling out. Now on your next breath, when you breathe in to the base of your feet, I'd like for you to imagine that the base of your big toe, so take a deep breath in, you're going to ground that base of the big toe which is this one over here, down to the floor. And then on your exhale, you're going to ground the base of the little toe down to the ground. So you got two bases, the, the two upper corners of your feet. On your next breath, inhale, you're going to ground the base of the inner heel down. And on the exhale, you're going to ground the base of the outer heel down. See if you can lift 10 toes up with all four corners of the feet rooted into the ground. And then exhale, allow your feet to just gently drop to the floor. And what you'll notice, I hope you've noticed, is that an arch begins to lift. You know, many people struggle with what is called flat feet, and that tends to create problems for people, even lower back pain. So by just learning how to stand like this in a dignified position, you're creating that natural arch, which um, a lot of us lose because we are using shoes with really comfortable padding. So our natural arch, our feet and our hands actually contains um, probably the most amount of joints. And that means bone connections than any part of the body. It's so intricate. And it's designed that way because we were meant to run barefoot onto the ground and barefoot isn't flat. It has different uh, textures to it. So our feet were designed to um, adapt to, to the different textures of the earth. And also our hands are meant to grab different textures. So when we you know, uh, seal it with a shoe, it loses its ability to form itself around the different textures. So anyway, so by standing in this um, uh, four corners of the feet rooted into the ground, then you elevate the arch up and that automatically creates a more sturdier um, posture. And you can see that because when you close your eyes, you feel grounded. Oftentimes when we close our eyes, we feel unsteady. But in this case, I hope you've noticed that you feel more grounded. Hey buddy, did you come to join the Tai Chi class? <coughs> All right, you just sit there. <laughs> All right, so from here, the next thing I'd like to invite you is to um, gently um, micro bend the knee. I think we talk about this. And to experiment by um, tipping your pelvis forward and back. Just kind of experiment with that sensation as if you were holding a bowl of water and by tipping it forward, you're kind of spilling the water forward. And by tipping it backward, you're spilling the wa water backwards. You want your pelvis to kind of sit where you're not spilling the water. The water can be still, okay? And from here, you have a muscle in the perineum area, which is the area between the anus and the genital. And if you squeeze that, it creates a, a kind of pulling up sensation with your spine. So you could gently squeeze that, uh, the perineum on your next inhale, or sorry, in your next exhale. There we go. And what happens is that your the crown of your head begins to grow tall and your spine uh, lengthens upwards. Okay, 
So as you breathe in, let's do that again. Exhale, squeeze, and then allow the crown of the head to move towards the, the sky. And from here, see if you could just gently relax your shoulders away from the ears. So this is horse dance. This is the beginning of our um, practice. Um, the next thing we're going to work with in Tai Chi is the energy, Chi. Hi, buddy. <laughs> Are you gonna do some Tai Chi as well? Okay, <laughs> he's right here. <laughs> you can't see him, but <laughs> yes, yeah, it's Tai Chi time. <laughs> Have a seat, okay? All right, so one of the things that we can do is we can begin to start tapping our body because in our body we have what are called meridians or where the Chi or where the energy flows. So you can just tap, Tap the inside of the thigh. Hi, bud. Oh, hello. <laughs> You're giving me a kiss. What is? What do you want? You don't want me to do Tai Chi? No. <laughs> you didn't tap your meridians? Okay, we're gonna tap your meridians. Okay, very good. <laughs> so we just give ourselves a tap, and that wakes up the chi, just kind of like how we were tapping on the back of our kidneys. It was waking up the chi. The next thing is to begin to notice what chi feels like, okay? So I invite you to take both of your hands um, and hold them um, close to each other, but not too close so that they're touching. You want to hold your, hold the, hold your hands um, close enough so that when you start um, moving them, so like our shoulders, one forward and then the other one um, kind of also going forward, it seems like, but they're kind of rotating in this um, in this way. And, and you'll see what I'm talking about, especially if you close your eyes, that eventually you're going to feel something. And uh, that's kind of like what we're working with is, um, in a lot of these body movements, mindful movements, I'm going to invite you to turn off a lot of the thinking mind of you know what happened in the past or in the future and come to the present moment using body uh, mindful movements and bringing our awareness to those slow and gentle movements so here i am i'm already beginning to feel what i call a chi ball and it's kind of like as if you were to take two opposing magnet i mean two magnets of the same um, and so either both positive or both negative and then you try to place them together and they often will not come together there's a kind of like a repulsion um, an energy and you may even begin begin to feel like a temperature change here for me certainly I can feel a warming sensation happening where my hands are and it's beginning to feel like there is an actual ball there. Okay, although we can't see it, we can feel it. And we can switch the direction and you'll still see, and you'll, or excuse me, you'll still notice, you'll still be able to feel that there is that energy there. So if you're not there yet in terms of feeling that energy ball, don't give up. Continue. I always like to say to people to try something new at least three times. The first time could be a, an off, the second time could be another off, but the third time, you never know. So um, I encourage you to experiment with this in your own time if you're not able to. Or if you are, some people, it comes to them really quickly. Okay? And then from here, you can create this expansion and contraction. There we go. And we can even make the chi ball larger. So I'm just making it large. It may take a little bit more concentration. All right, but I can feel it coming bigger and bigger. All right. So from here, we're going to see if we can then use the movements that we had earlier, which is this, remember this twisting movement? So we're gonna take you know, the ball and kind of switch it so the 
the left arm over, turning towards the left, the right arm over, turning towards the right, and rotating it like so. So remember, our feet firmly planted onto the ground with the four corners, okay? And the movement now actually starts from the feet. It starts from the feet and then it works its way up towards our um, pelvis. And then from there, the shoulders and the hands turn. Okay. All right. I'm going to invite you to do this a little bit slower. Okay. So slower is oftentimes harder. You know, it's not the, the big movement. You know, we're not asking you to lift 200 pounds of weight here. What I'm asking you is to lift 200 pounds of attention into this slow, very mindful, intentional movement. There we go. The next thing what you're going to notice in the silence is Either the mind will begin to start popping, and that's okay. What we can do is bring it to the breath, so we can coordinate our inhalation and exhalation. With our movements. Wow, isn't that something? Is even Buddy here has settled down. Can't see him, but he's on the floor laying down, calm. And just check in with yourself. How do you feel now versus when you first started, when you first came in class? There we go. Okay, so now we're just going to take this chi ball and then we're going to create this wave-like sensation with our hands going up and then bending our knees down. Kind of like a wave going up. Inhaling and exhaling down. Inhaling up. What I like people to, I like you to invite people to do after is they can actually take this chi and they can breathe it in. Then they can rub it all over the body, their hair, their arms, the meridians that we tapped earlier on. And it's a great way to internalize that type of work. Now, let's see how much time we've consumed. Okay, 23 minutes. So I'll invite you to a, a seated um, posture as we conclude today. I'm just going to readjust this tripod. Just give me a second. Okay. And there we go. There we are. Okay. And um, so... Oftentimes, the best way to absorb the work that we've done is to um, either sit, um, sit on a comfortable position with our eyes closed, or what's better is to even lay down. In yoga, we call this posture Shavasana. It's always the last posture of any um, Hatha yoga exercise, and it's the most impor important posture. So I actually um, dissuade people from skipping Shavasana in their yoga class. It's the most important posture. So I invite you to lay down and place one um, hand on your heart center and one in your um, abdomen, on your abdomen. And I wanted to share with you this poem that I sent out to everyone. Um, if you're a part of my newsletter, um, you would have received it last. I, I send out a newsletter um, every Saturday. 
So you would have received it um, last Saturday. And if you're not yet into the newsletter, um, I encourage you to um, join the newsletter. It's, it's free, it's easy, and then you um, receive a lot more um, in-depth uh, um, um, work that I share with everyone, including this poem. So um, let me just uh, pull it up. It's called Thinking Like a Mountain by Aldo Leopold. And the first time I heard this poem, it was actually in Shavasana, where the, uh, the, um, um, the yoga instructor um, read it to us. So for the, all those people writing in the comments, I'll have to check this out later because I'm using my phone and they're very small, so I can't really, uh, I can't see it, but thank you for participating. <laughs> I see the hearts. <laughs> all right, so um, I invite you to lay down on your back, if you could, with one hand on the heart center and one hand on the belly, just being aware of the breath. If you feel safe to do so, close your eyes and here is the poem, Thinking Like a Mountain by Aldo Leopold. A deep, chesty brawl echoes from rimrock to rimrock, rolls down in the mountain and fades into the far blackness in the night. It is an outburst of wild, defiant sorrow and of contempt for all the adversities of the world. Every li living thing, and perhaps many a dead ones as well, pays heed to the call. To the deer, it is a reminder of the way of all flesh. To the pine, a forecast of midnight scuffles and of blood upon the snow. To the coyote, a promise of gleanings to come. To the cowman, a threat of red ink at the bank. To the hunter, a challenge of fang against bullet. Yet behind these obvious and immediate hopes and fears, there lies a deeper meaning known only to the mountain itself. Only the mountain has lived long enough to listen objectively to the howl of a wolf. Those unable to decipher the hidden meanings know nevertheless that they, it is there, for it is felt in all wolf country and distinguishes that country from all other land. It tingles in the spine of all who hears wolves by night or who can scan their tracks by day. Even without sight or sound of wolf, it is implicit in a hundred small events. The midnight whiny of a pack horse, the rattle of rolling rock, the bound of fleeting deer, the way Shadows lie under the spruces. Only the ineducible ined trio can fail to sense the presence or absence of wolves, or the fact that mountains have a secret opinion about them. My own conviction on this score dates from the day I saw a wolf die. We were eating lunch on a high rim rock at the foot with, with a, which a turbulent river elbowed its way. We saw what we thought was a doe fording the torrent, her breast awash in white water when she climbed the bank towards us and shook out her tail. We realized our error. It was a wolf. A half dozen others, evidently grown pups, sprang from the willows and all joined 
in a welcome, welcoming milieu of wagging tails and playful maulings. What was literally a pile of wolves withered and tumbled in the center of an open flat at the foot of our rim rock. In those days, we've never heard of passing up a chance to kill a wolf. In a second, we were pumping lead into the pack, but with more excitement than accuracy. How to aim a steep downhill shot is always confusing. When our rifles were empty, the old wolf was down and a pup was dragging a leg into impassable side rocks. We reached the old wolf in time to watch a fierce green fire dying in her eyes. I realized then and have known ever since that there was something new to me in those eyes, something known only to her and to the mountain. I was young then and full of trigger itch. I thought that because fewer wolves meant more deer, that no wolves would mean hunters, pa would, would mean hunter's paradise. But after seeing the green fire die, I sensed that neither the wolf nor the mountain agreed with such a view. Since then, I have lived to see state after state extirpate its wolves. I watched the face of many a newly wolfless mountain and seen in south facing slopes wrinkle with a maze of new deer trails. I have never seen edible bush and seedling brows, first to anemic destitute and then to death. I have seen every edible tree defoliated to the height of a saddle horn. Such a mountain looks as if someone had given God a new pruning shear and forbidden him all other exercise. In the end, the starved bones of the hoped for deer herd dread dead on its own too much bleach the bones of the dead sage or molder under the high-lined juniper. I now suspect that such a deer herd lives in mortal fear of its wolves. So does a mountain live in mortal fear of its deer. And perhaps with better cause, for while a buck pulled down by wolves can be replaced in two or three years, a range pulled down by too many deer may fail of replacement in as many decades. So, also with cows. The cowman who cleans his range of wolves does not realize that he is taking over the wolf's job of trimming the herd to fit the range. He has not learned to think like a mountain. Hence, we have dust bowls and rivers washing the future into the sea. We all strive for safety, prosperity, and comfort, long life and dullness. The deer strives with its supple legs, the cowman with trap and, po and poison, the statesman with pen, the most of us with machines, votes, and dollars. But it all comes to the same thing, peace in our time, a measure of success in this all well, well enough and perhaps is a requisite to objective thinking. But too much safety seems to yield only danger if the long, in the long run. Perhaps this is behind Thoreau's dictum. In wilderness is the salvation of the world. Perhaps this is the hidden meaning in the howl of the wolf, long known among mountains, but seldom perceived among men. Um, that's the poem by uh, Aldo Leopold, Thinking Like a Mountain. I really, really love that poem. And um, stay tuned in the newsletter as I break down what this poem means, uh, especially for me, and what it has anything to do with trauma and uh, healing of trauma. So this Saturday, I'm going to write that response, and maybe next Friday we could take it up together. So if you're not yet a part of the newsletter, just go to traumatransfiguration.com. There's a place there where you can write your email. 
And that's truly the place to be connected. You know, I run a YouTube channel and a podcast and uh, the, the newsletter really connects and ties out all the information that's happening between the different streams of information. I have to go because I hear Buddy um, eating Malulu's food. <laughs> so I hope you all have a happy Friday and we'll do this every Friday if this is um, useful to all of you. I am a yoga teacher and a Qigong teacher as well. So I like to meld um, all of my um, gifts into a, a pretty little package. So thank you so much for joining me. I can't wait to read those comments. Unfortunately, I couldn't see them because they're too tiny. But I hope you join me every Friday. Next Friday, we're going to expand our Tai Chi movements into what is called the Tai Chi Xuan, 24 style Tai Chi. We're going to learn 24 different moves. So maybe every Friday, I'll introduce one of the moves and how you can apply that in your daily life. So thank you so much. Don't forget to join the newsletter, traumatransfiguration.com. And we'll see you next Friday. Bye.